A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked? or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs. He will answer them, Amen I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. In the remote mountains of northern Greece, there once lived a monk who had desired all of his life to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Sepulchre, to walk three times around it, to kneel, and to return home a new person. Through the years, the monk managed to put aside what money he could. Finally, near the end of his life, he had enough to embark on his trip. And so, one day, he sets out through the gates of his monastery, and with staff in hand, he set out with great anticipation for Jerusalem. But no sooner had he left the cloister when he encountered a man in rags, bent to the ground, picking herbs and wild berries. Where are you going, Father? the man asked. To the Holy Sepulchre, friend. By God's grace, I shall walk three times around it, kneel, and return home a different man from what I am. How much money do you have, Father? inquired the man. Thirty pounds, the monk answered. Father, I am a poor man with a wife and hungry children. Give me the money. Walk three times around me. Then kneel and go back into your monastery. The monk thought for a moment scratching the ground with his staff, then took the thirty pounds of his travel bag and gave the whole of it to the poor man. The monk walked three times around him, knelt, and went back through the gates of his monastery. The monk returned to his cloister, a new person. He had recognized the beggar as Christ, not in some holy place far away, right outside his monastery door. You see, my friends, the monk has been blessed with the vision of humanity that Jesus articulates in the parable of the sheep and the goats, a vision that realizes the holiness of God within every man, woman, and child, a vision of humanity that sees deeper than the externals of race, nationality, culture, and language, 
to behold a life of God animating the lives of all who draw breath. A vision that, once realized, changes not only those we are able to assist, but changes us as well. My sisters and brothers, on this solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ the King, this last Sunday of the church year, may we embrace God's vision of being good stewards of God's creation. May God's Spirit instill in us the compassion and wisdom to recognize every human being as the manifestation of God's life and love in our midst. Anything good we do for others is of infinite worth if it is done for Jesus Christ. What we do or fail to do for His least ones, we do or fail to do for Him. The love of Christ, poured out so generously for us, must become our generous gift to others. When we learn to respond to others with our love, Jesus Christ becomes our way of life, our joy, our everlasting blessedness. May the Lord give you peace.